Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to talk about deseparatedness or conditional independence in directed graphical models. I want to start with a couple of examples, then we will derive the general rules and I will provide an algorithm on how to compute deseparatedness in arbitrary directed graphical models. So we want to talk about the conditional independence. This conditional independence makes only sense when we are talking about latent and observable or observed nodes. So make sure that you are aware what those two are. Okay, let me start with the following directed graphical model. So we are concerned with happiness or with the mood in a particular day. And we are asking us what is affecting it. And for the sake of simplicity, let's bring up these points. We have your night sleep quality. We have the weather. And these are the two effects. And your happiness is affecting your productivity. And the weather is also affecting the outfit that you will select for a particular day. And we know that this is a DGM, a directed graphical model, and we know one particular objective of a directed graphical model is to factorize the joint. And this is nice and we've used this, but we can also use it for other things. So for example, we can ask ourselves how are relations between nodes in our graph. So the relations between nodes in the graph. And this is what we want to answer. We want to ask ourselves, how is your weather and your night sleep quality related? And so on and so forth. And for this, of course, we will start with a shorthand notation. We will call this an N, a W, this an O, an H, and a P. Then we can build the following directed graphical model, an N, goes to an H, a W goes to an H, the W goes to the O, and the H goes to your productivity P. And I already said it's about latent and observed nodes. So far we only have latent nodes. But now we can introduce some observed nodes. So for example, assume you would model something with this directed graphical model, so your happiness but you don't have access to all the random variables. For simplicity or for whatever reason, you can only assess your, um, your the weather, for instance. And then you want to ask yourself some questions. So um, the question is, if we only observe the weather, so let's also put this in our classical notation with a shaded node, um, can we say something about relationships between other nodes? Okay. And let's put this down. Let's get ourselves the graphs. I will call this the first example. And here we have the night sleep quality, our happiness, the productivity, and we have our observed weather and we have our outfit. And the question is now, for example, if we look at the happiness and your outfit, is this still related to each other? So imagine you know the weather then you can say with what kind of probability you will be happy and you can say with what kind of a probability a certain outfit that you will wear. But since there is no other connection in between the two and you already know the weather, they are independent. And they are not just generally independent, but they are mar uh, conditionally independent. So we have a conditional independence between H and W given, and this is an observed node, 
given, uh, sorry, between O and given the W. And this is the definition of deseparatedness. So we would say that H and O are deseparated given W. And we now want to write this in terms of a probability density function. And for this, we will use the following joint distribution. And this is a distribution of H and O given W. And you now might ask yourself, wait a second, how can we come up with such kind of a probability density function? Because we have a joint which is uh, P of N, W, H, O, and P. But we know that we could go from here to here by marginalization. This is not relevant for our task of defining deseparatedness or conditional independence, but this is just to give you the context how to come from a full directed graphical model to this. And the marginalization would mean as if we would take a cutout with only these three nodes by integrating or summing over all possible states of all the other nodes. Okay, let's get back. So it's about this probability density function. And we want to define the conditional independence. And this means that this joint has to split up into in a product of two factors and with each of them being only with one H and one with one O. So this is a P of H given W and a P of O given W. And that's important, conditional independence, we always have this condition here. And we'll put this in red. This is not marginal independence, which would be P of H and O is P of H times P of O. So this is not here. Okay, this is our first example. Let's continue with the second one. And the second one, we will observe the variable H. So again, we have the night sleep quality, we have the weather, we have our outfit, and we have our productivity. And then we have our happiness. And this time we will measure our happiness. And in the case now, we want to look at the relation between the weather and the productivity. And again, we can ask ourselves, okay, we know the happiness and we also know the relation from happiness to productivity. So we can also judge about the productivity. And since we know the happiness, we know it is a certain particular value of happiness. It is not affected by the weather. And this also means the productivity is not affected by the weather. So in this case, again, W is conditionally independent of P given, and here we have H. And we would write this down as P of W and P given H is P of W given H times P of P given H. This is our second example. Let's continue with um, the third one. Maybe just one more note on this. Um, this looks a little strange to you because here we would have the um, W given H. So it's kind of hard to express this because usually the arrow goes the other way around. Um, but you know that you can easily express this with Bayes rule since um, you can just go from uh, P of W given H to the other way around. So express by Bayes rule. Okay, let's look at our third and last example. And here we are our N and W and we are again observing the H. So we have an O, we have a P and we are observing the H. But this time we are interested in the following, we are interested in the relation between the night sleep quality and the weather. 
And now we ask ourselves, so we know our happiness. And there are two factors affecting our happiness, the night sleep quality and the weather. Now that we know the happiness, is are they conditionally independent? So, so can we write down the following? So P of N and W given H is P of N given H times P of W given H. And interestingly, this is not the case. And in the first term, it might seem a little strange, but this is something that is called Simpson's paradoxon. And I would recommend you to read the Wikipedia article. It is really nice. There have been quite some studies or interesting observations with Simpson's paradoxon. And it also makes sense. So at first glance, we think that so the, the nice sleep quality and the weather is not affecting each other. But once we know the happiness, there certainly starts to be a relation between the two. So in, in words, this would mean if we know the random variable or if we observe it, if we know the random variable caused by um, by two other, then those two are no longer independent. Okay, now we looked at uh, three examples. Based on them, we can extract three essential rules. And as you might have guessed, we are always looking at triplets, so three nodes. So these basic rules always consist of three nodes. So we have the basic rules. And the first rule is the following. You have a variable A and a variable C and you observe a variable B and this B is affecting A and C. And then we know if we observe B, then A and C are independent because B causes A and B causes C. And since we know B, we know how A is caused and we also know how C is caused. Uh, so P of A and C given B is P of A given B times P of, sorry, P of C given B. And then we have our next rule. So this is the, let's call this the first rule. The next one is the following. Again, we have A and C and we observe a B, but this time A is causing B and B is causing C. Same would be true the other way around. And so we know B, so we know that C is only caused by B. And since we know B, we know how C is going to be caused. So there is no relation between A and C. So P of A and C given B is P of A given B times P of C given B. And then lastly, we have our third rule. And here we have the following. We have an A, we have an B, and we have a C. And the important here, this C is not observed. And this is crucial. And in this case, we have the following. P of A and C is P of A times P of C. Note also there is no given. And this makes sense because we kind of have a marginal independence here. And this is also easily memorizable because both A and B are roots. And we know in a directed graphical models, roots are conditionally independent. Okay, let us now continue with an algorithm. And for this, we are again looking at our original directed graphical model with an N, with a W, with an H, 
and a P and oh sorry not a P an O and a P here N is causing H, W is causing also H, W is causing O and H is causing P and in this case we have the following strategy first mark the givens so in other terms we would just build up the correct directed uh, correct directed graphical model and here in our case we say for example this will be w so we mark this one here okay then next we apply basic rules to all triplets and we see okay here we have rule number one so this is blocking so we put a mark here and here we have rule number three so this is also blocking and we don't have rule number one and then we have three check if there is a path between random variables that is not blocked and so we could for example then ask ourselves what is the relation between n and o and we see there is a block, there is a block, so there is no way. And for this, we are ignoring the arrows. So this is an undirected. And in this case, we would have here, for example, and N and P are deseparated and given W but not just given w but also if nothing was given because we would have the h as the blocking node here and we could say either deseparated or conditionally independent okay let us quickly go over it once again so we started off with a directed graphical model of this shape and we said that we are looking at deseparatedness or conditional independence. And this is always related to latent and observable nodes. So we need to have a certain number of observable nodes in order to identify which paths are blocking. And our big task here is if we can find relationships between random variables, or more precise, if we can make certain random variables conditionally independent. And we looked at three elementary examples, and from those we could have we could extract the three basic rules. And with these rules, we can apply deseparation to every arbitrary directed graphical model and we looked at an algorithm that does this with um, certain steps first we mark our givens then we apply the basic rules to all triplets and then we check if a path between random variable is not blocked and important point here is the path is undirected so we are ignoring the arrows